Hello, this is Martin Brossman coming to you from Sola Coffee Shop in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a quick impromptu. I was able to catch up with David Williams, who's also on the run. Uh, and we just taught the course on uh, photography for social media. Uh, great to have you here quickly, uh, David, and catch you on the run. Yeah, it's good to be here. I'm able to chisel out some time so that we can uh, take care of this. This is our first recorded uh Google Plus uh, video together, so it's kind of exciting to uh, have the one, I know you've done them before, but this is my first uh, recorded one, so a new experience for me. Yeah, I've done quite a few of these things, So, uh, but I, I was just exciting the questions people asked and others, and uh, thought we could take a minute review. Doing it, I, I've I've been wanting to put this together for a year, and then I, I want to uh, thank uh, Kramer Gallimer. That's a uh, uh, he does commercial photography. He was the first uh, mentor in giving me some ideas on it, and then you came on board as well, and and he basically transitioned from including social media from 35 years in photography, and then you pretty much have a lifetime of photography. It's just you're bringing it to the forefront again. Yeah, that's exactly right. So trying to embrace the uh, today's technology with photography and video, which there's so much opportunity incorporating those two pieces uh, into you know today's technology with social media and websites and things of that nature. And some of the just to give people a few tips to start before they can get to a class. Uh, the the thing is is to understand the idea of pixels. That, that's to me was a very important piece for people who want to be able to understand manipulating pictures on social media because it's different from dots per inch where you want a lot of dots in the inch so that the print looks good but that's going to be a big file and so much bigger than what you need in screen based items. Just beginning to understand the pixels are the little dots and, and like here this screen is so many dots across by so many dots above. <laughs> and would you add a few uh, uh, input on that? Yeah, well, the, the camera that's just over my shoulder um, is what we used as an example of an image straight out of the camera uh, <clears throat> being 5,700 by 3,600 in dimensions. So basically 5,700 plus pixels one way and 3,600 plus pixels, <clears throat> pixels the other way. And uh, putting that in perspective is that, you know, a website uh, typically is about 1,000 pixels wide. So... Uh, straight out of the camera, you've got this massive image uh, that also, in a lot of cases, is print quality, uh, 300 DPI, sometimes higher. And so we did, you know, with a free resizing tool, we showed how to drop that down to a, a 640 by 480 image uh, that was a much file, you know, smaller uh, file size that allowed people to actually have something that's that's usable, so they get much faster upload speed and you know, images even out of the, the $100 camera, the Sony WX50 uh, that we used in class, the image size was pretty massive and overkill to be used on the web. So people just have to keep in mind uh, print quality and web quality is still going to look great on the web, but they don't need, <clears throat> you know, the 300 dots per inch, more like 72. They don't need a, a, a um, image that's 5,700 pixels wide because that's overkill. And uh, another piece that was uh, real valuable we brought up was uh, that even some of the some of the characteristics of uh, professional photography is the ability to drop the background out of focus, and how now some of the lower end cameras, like some of the ones we demonstrate in class, the Sony we mentioned, at the certain level, uh, allow for the kind of a portrait dropping the background out of focus, and and uh, that's pretty exciting because that adds a uh, a little bit richer quality. For example, the lens here that I'm using built into my Mac, if you notice the stuff in the background is also in focus, which can be slightly distracting. But if we were using one of these and able to do a video with it, that would be more diffused and it would bring more attention to me. Uh, David, would you add something to that? Yeah, the, the, I looked over to the side just a moment ago while you were talking because I happen to have you know, the Sony WX50, uh, which is about a $100 camera off of Amazon, 
that has what they call a drop focus uh, effect on it. And the, the professional level camera that's over my shoulder, you're controlling that through your, your settings on your lens. And most professional photographers are able to make their images stand out a lot more by putting the, the focus, uh, the, you know, taking the focus off the background, putting it on the subject. And so many of the smaller cameras, you know, the $100 camera that I just showed, uh, a lot of those are made to have the background completely in focus, whereas this one has a feature on it that uh, I can take the image and, and uh, be able to make the background out of focus and get that more professional effect. So, you know, for $100, uh, it shoots great in low light and is able to get the drop focus effect, which uh, will give you a much more, uh, you know, professional looking image, you know, in a $100 camera. And then one more thing that came up which was really important is some of these sites like Amazon now are requiring certain specifications for the individual to sell on the site and we started to talk about that including getting a truly white background and and the truth is right now you still are going to have to learn a few new tricks uh, but the cost is coming down instead of several thousand dollars for the gear you're probably going to have to invest around four or five hundred to really get a setup that's going to work well on that and we started to address that in the class as well yeah because uh it's about you know somebody's got to decide and, and for you know micro business and very small business owners um you know i'd love to think that everybody would hire a professional photographer but i'm also realistic and realize that we we live in a real world and not everything uh, people are not going to go out to eat at a restaurant every night they're not going to hire a professional photographer every time they need an image taken and so one of the things that I'd like to bring value to smaller businesses that are on tighter budgets is say look if you're gonna you know try to do it yourself let me at least provide some insight on some steps you can take and some things you can do because they're gonna try it regardless anyway um, and so I think it's a lot about knowing the market you're going after as a professional and knowing when people may hire you and when they may not and in this particular case you know we're trying to come up with affordable solutions that somebody might want to do it in-house if somebody's got a photograph uh, regular products and they're well matter of fact you know just a good example I'm sitting above I'm on the second floor above North Carolina General Stores. They got a lot of great neat stuff in there, you know, a bone sucking sauce that's the, the hot version. They got coffee that they grind. They got uh, orange crushed sodas and, and grape sodas. But, you know, to think that they're going to call me, uh, even being upstairs from them, to have me shoot every product in their store to feature them, I think is a little unrealistic. So with that said, uh, I think part of uh, my job would be to say, hey, let me give you some tips, let me give you some advice, and hopefully that will lead to, hey, if you know anybody, you know, larger, point me in their direction, or if I can help you in a way when you have a larger project that's ad-based, and we can all work together and realize that um, we're not, they're not necessarily stealing money out of my pocket, I'm providing value to them that they hopefully find helpful that will hopefully be a win-win for everybody long-term, and as you said, we seem to be finding that that four or five hundred dollar price range is a, a pretty good competitive price range uh, to be able to try to accomplish at least in the class we taught last night uh, what most of that class was trying to accomplish with photography uh, we could probably put something together for them for a few hundred dollars that they could go out and grab some pieces that they could do themselves absolutely and and of course what I've learned is uh, when you know how to do it and then you know because you can distinguish the difference between something I've done versus a video production or pictures you've done uh, obviously there are clear areas where I want the best photo in fact I'm using your photos and videos in my marketing material that doesn't mean I can't take my own pictures it's just uh, I want something uh, showcasing its first impression to be the best thing I can get yeah, and that's a good point because there there's, comes a time that, um, you know, everybody has to realize this is as good as I can get on my own, so is it time to hire a professional? A lot of people can, uh, 
you know, build a set of steps at their house, but they might be able to pay somebody a little bit of money that it, they know is going to build it better who does it for a living. And so, you know, I kind of approach photography uh, <clears throat> the same way in that realizing that, you know, I can still add value to people in their business by providing advice. One of the things that, that I plan to do more of is actually be a paid consultant you know, in the photography and video uh, world to be able to help smaller businesses accomplish things and, and hopefully make their business look better than it would have if they had just went to a, you know, local store with no knowledge and said, oh, this is on sale for $59. I'm going to grab it and go back and take pictures at my shop. Well, uh, this is great. I want to make a quick video catching you. I know I have to go shortly to I'm heading out to Lumberton, excited to teach a class, and uh, really good to have you, David, on, online. I'll let you just mention how they can find you. Then please, if you get value out of this, make comments below and look for the links for other information. Uh, this is uh, I'm just so excited to roll out this cause, this class on uh, photography for social media, so make sure you uh, work to get those data on how to get it and in and uh, get your local uh, schools and others to bring bring us in for that training. Yeah, how and, uh, can they reach you, David? Okay, yeah, the way uh, folks can connect with me is um, it's pretty simple. It's five letters: uh, dwppc.com. That's www.dwppc.com, which is short for David Williams, Pro Photographer, Cinematographer. And if um, up in the on the tab up in the right hand side. Uh, there's a link to my blog, which I plan to get more active with, and then there's some social media links up in the right-hand side that people can connect with me on various forms of social media. So thanks so much for taking the time before you head out to uh, knock this video out. I'm uh, anxious to see what it's going to look like. Yeah, and excited to uh, be the one that brought you on for the first Google Hangout on Air, which I've uh, really been using now. Gosh, just about since it started. So have a great day, uh, David, and we'll, we'll talk soon. Thanks so much. Take care.